Today is a big day for the canopy setup. I'm finally getting around to upgrading my lighting situation with these rigid LED lighting strips to finally replace this pesky LED uh, adhesive strip lighting that's just been doing nothing but fall off the canopy over the past year and a half since I first installed this stuff throughout. Every camping trip I'm always like getting my roll of duct tape out and just reattaching the lights along because they're they're dangling down. So doing it right, bought these nice rigid LED light strips from uh, Off-Road Living here in WA. This is the AllSpark one meter red and white LED strip lights. Not sponsored, I paid full retail for these, $69 a piece. And that was including delivery, and I reckon that's a pretty good deal. So these should be a massive improvement over the old uh, adhesive LED light strip, not just because they're rigid and shouldn't fall off my canopy, but also because they're just a much better quality LED overall. And these also differ from my current setup in another way as well. Instead of being amber and white, like the current situation I have in the canopy setup, these ones are actually red and white. Now, I was a bit unsure when I did my first lighting setup how effective those amber lights were gonna be. Obviously, the main advantage of amber instead of white is that it uh, attracts bugs a lot less around camp. I wasn't sure how effective that actually was gonna be, but I must say, since installing it, it's quite a noticeable difference when you flip from the white across to the amber. And nowadays, like if there's any bugs around camp, we'll just turn all the white lights off, just run the amber, and it makes a massive difference. But these are red, so not even amber. So it's just down to the uh, the colors that bugs can see, and red is even more effective than amber in not attracting those bugs. Again, I've never tested this out either, but I do enjoy trying new things out, and so the amber was effective. Red, in theory, it should be even more effective in not attracting those bugs to camp, because no one likes a camp set up full of bugs. As far as wiring is concerned, obviously these LED adhesive strips don't have any, any switches built in. So I run that wiring back to my switch panel just here, which I do like and I would like to be able to continue using. Whereas these new light strips have switches built in. That's pretty much the same for all different makes and models, no matter which uh, manufacturer you go for. Now, obviously these switches, I'm still gonna have to be able to access in one way or another, but my theory is I'm gonna run the wiring from these light strips back down to my existing switch panel. That way, if I leave the white switched on at all times, I'll be able to just use that switch and it's gonna operate the lights pretty much the same way my current switches are. And if I wanna to switch to the red setting, I'm just gonna to have to reach up and toggle the red on and the white off and kind of use a hybrid of the switches, but I reckon that's gonna work out the best for me. If you'd like any more info on how I've wired up my DIY switch panel to power the lights, I'll leave a link to my 12 watt installation video in the description down below. But in a nutshell, my canopy battery is connected to a simple fuse box, which then distributes protected power throughout the canopy to accessories like this switch panel. So I removed all the old LED strip lights, which I must say was a pretty satisfying job after dealing with hassle after hassle over the past year and a half. And I've also exposed all my wiring behind my headboards just here. Looks like a bit of a mess, but hopefully I can remember where I wired everything a year and a half ago. Uh, so essentially I'm left with two sets of wires up here that used to run to the white and the amber separately up underneath the canopy roof just here and two separate longer bits of wire that used to run up to the white and the amber LED lights up on the canopy door just here. Now, one of the benefits with this new rigid light strip is that you only need to run one set of power wires to the actual light strip to operate both the red or the amber and also the white as well in the one source. So it means I can do away with half of my wiring. I'll remove that fully. Now I have just marked on these this wiring which one corresponded to the white lights on the outside and also on the inside there. That's what that little bit of red tape is on half of the wires. And that just lets me know which ones correspond to my switches down here because I do still want to wire these new rigid light strips in with my old switches so I can operate the outside lights and the inside lights and then of course uh, operate the colors using the individual switches on the light strips themselves. So the next step for me is going to be to remove this wiring from the old amber lights, get these new lights installed in the canopy and then wire it all up. Uh, 
After positioning the new light strip in the center of the canopy door, I carefully marked out where the mounting points were and drilled a 3.5 millimeter hole at each end. To attach the lights, I added a small strip of double-sided tape in the center, pressed that firmly in place and installed a rivet at each end. With the first light strip firmly in place, I repeated the same procedure for the interior. Wiring up lights like these is extremely easy because they come with a short length of wiring pre-installed. So it's just a matter of connecting the positive and negative wires to a fused power source, which in my case is my switch panel. Over on the other side of the canopy, I'm only running a single light strip because I don't really access this side that often. And when I do, it's just to grab something out. So only having interior lighting suits me just fine. And just like that, my new lighting is now fully installed in the canopy, such an easy job. Definitely recommend giving it a go if you're new to the whole DIY side of things, just make sure they're fused appropriately. So these are not going anywhere now, very firmly mounted in place, and I'm quite happy with the brightness as well. If we get this uh, garage light turned off, thank you for my little camera crew behind the scenes, thanks Bianca. So as you can see, definitely giving off a decent amount of light, lighting up my whole uh, area just here. My kitchen area just here will be uh, nice and basked in light, which is just fantastic. And also my wiring plan actually worked out quite well too. So essentially I've run both these light strips back to my same old switches as the plan was. And that means I can turn these lights on and off using those exact same switches, just like I used to. But the only extra step I now have to take is if I do want to swap these to the red light, if bugs are infesting my camping setup, just have to turn that white light off and turn the red light on instead and do that on both light strips. So not the end of the world, but definitely an extra step I now have to take. And how cool does that red light look? I'm really happy with the, just the vibe that's giving off around camp, pretty cool. But it should do an amazing job at keeping those bugs away from camp, hopefully. And then uh, when there's no bugs, pretty simple to swap back over to the white light. As far as power consumption is concerned, I've just been running a few numbers with my Victron Smart Shunt. And if I run just the one light strip on white only, it's drawing about 1.45 amps worth of power. If we swap that over to red, we use a little bit less as you might expect, and the draw drops down to around 1.04 amps. Now for lighting, that is probably a little bit more than I was expecting. It's probably twice the amount of power draw from the adhesive light strips that I was using before, but it's also giving off more than twice the amount of light. So I'm pretty happy with that trade-off. And it's also not a big enough draw that it's gonna cause many problems in the power department. Got plenty of power in the battery over the other side of the canopy, and it shouldn't affect most dual battery setups too badly. So if you guys are interested in putting some similar lights in your canopy or four wheel drive setup, I'll uh, chuck a link to these particular lights in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope this video has brightened your day.